Zero Accounting Software 2023 Budgeted Income Statement Reports. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we started up in a prior presentation. Get first a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you. Because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the padding is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Great guitars. Let's duplicate some tabs to put our reports in. We're going to go to the tab up top and duplicate that tab. Tab up top and duplicate that tab. And then back to the tab to the middle. Accounting drop down, opening up a balance sheet report. This being a comparative one. If you don't have a comparative one, open the standard one. Tab into the right, accounting drop down, same thing on the income statement. This is a comparative income statement. If you don't have it, open a standard income statement. Last time or in prior presentations, we've been putting together our budget. So we basically took the data input or the information that we had in our system, two months of data input. We exported it to Excel as our starting point to create a budget, we wanted to create a budget for the entire year. Therefore, that two months of data input, we kind of thought of as if it was the prior two months of uh, November and December, used it to construct a 12 month budget, and then we imported it from here back into zero so that we can now run reports from it. So note how zero fits into the system then. We want to think of it as first, we want to export from a zero typically to something like Excel so that we have more capacity in Excel to create our budget oftentimes. And then we want to take it from Excel and put it back into zero, possibly using the template to do so, or possibly just doing the data input so that now once in zero, we can run reports from zero in our same system as time passes, for example, we're imagining here January and February has passed and therefore we have actual data for January and February as well as the budgeted data and we can run variance analysis uh, within Zero, which is one of the major uh, tools that you will have for it. All right, let's open up another tab and look at some of our major uh, reports. We'll also see how we can kind of adjust the, the reports if there's an error in it or something which we have here, we have an error in it. So I'm gonna duplicate it, which we made on purpose. We purposely did the error because we don't really make mistakes over here, but sometimes people make mistakes. So we try to uh, demonstrate in our practice problems, like mistakes being made and how you can fix them if you, if you're, uh, if you, if you make mistakes. So I'm gonna hit the drop down and let's go into our reports. 
and then we're going to go into the so we made our budget manager now we've got our two main reports which is uh the budget summary and the budget variance the variance is the one that really uh, is helpful as time passes because it gives us that differential whereas the budget report kind of just repeats what we kind of have in excel over here although it gives us those subtotals and whatnot in a nice format for us so let's open up the summary first i'm going to right click and duplicate it and up top we've got our summary report so uh this is this is the data we've got the uh, overall budget now remember we could have multiple budgets uh, that we, we could put together. So that's another great tool that we can have because we, we might want to run different variants or different variantial budgets. Then we've got the from point. We're going to be saying uh, January uh, 2023. The periods represent the intervals that we want to show. So normally we would have the month by month breakout or you might have like a three month by three month. That would be a quarterly type of breakout or for the entire year. So currently we have here one month at a time and the number of periods that we want to show is we're going to show uh, the 12 periods. So if I update that, then we're showing January on through uh, December. So if I wanted to, to show something on a quarterly basis, then I could go and say I want to show it every three months. And then I, I would think that we would only want four periods, four periods of three month periods. Uh, and that would give us our quarterlies. So, so now we've got uh, March, June, September, and December. And then if we wanted a half year, like every six months, we can go to the six months one. And in that case, I would think we would only want two periods and those would end on June and December. And then we could do a yearly one with 12 month periods, which in this case, we only have one because that would be our uh, yearly number. So pretty neat breakout to kind of be able to get us to those different types of reports uh, that could be like a quarterly report uh, or a semi yearly report or a yearly report. So I'm going to go back down to the months because that's the way we did our data input and I want 12 months so 12 periods. And there we have it. Now we had this issue with the data input last time and we can see if I look at this compared to my data input here, I'm at I'm at 1037 in January and here I'm at uh, 1706. So one way we can try to compare this is to just keep on looking at the totals as I go down. So the first thing I would look at is at 34606 and go back on over here and say, all right, does that tie out to these three, uh, uh, these three in January? 34606 it does and then i get down uh to here i've got the cost of goods sold 25275 so that looks that looks 25 22 977 22977 and then uh and then we've got this amount uh here and that's basically the amount that could be throwing us off because it's going into basically other income. So if I so if I uh, take my difference down here, I could say, what's my difference? If I took my uh, 1706, uh, 1706, and say, what's the difference between the two? It's that 669, if I divide that by two, I could see it's that 334. So this one's going the wrong way because it's it's in that other category. So it's in here and it's it's that other income I want it to be like shown as an expense. So I'm going to put that in as a negative and that hopefully should shore this up. So I'm going to go back to the first tab and let's fix our budget by going to the accounting drop down and then we're going to go into our reports and then we'll go into our budget uh, manager the budget manager and then i'm just going to go into the i'm going to get rid of the prior period showing and then let's show it on the full view that looks good and then i had this amount i want it to be in there as a negative so i'm going to say negative and i'm just going to put the negative all the way across because i don't want it to mess up anything else so i'm just going to go into each of these 
even though it's tedious and I probably could copy it across, but I'm kind of hesitant to uh, do anything drastically incorrect since this one was a little bit different. Uh, so I'll say negatives, negatives, negatives. Why are you so negative, man? I'm not negative. I'm just putting the negatives in. I'm a very positive individual kind of some, compared to some, at least. Maybe. Depends. It's whatever. And it's, let's, let's run this again. Let's update it again. And then if I go, if I go down, so now we're at the 1038. 1038 is pretty close. If I go all the way to the right, we're at December 23816. So 23816 uh, in December. Uh, okay, so, so that's going to be our budget uh, summary report. If I wanted to take a look at the whole year, I could say 12 months in the period. And then let's say that we want to show one period of 12 months. And so now we've got our total, which comes out to 125,972. And I've got 125,965. 125,972. So it's off by uh, seven, which could be rounding. So I'm cool with that because it's just a budget. So so it shouldn't. So that's kind of immaterial. So I'm like, all right, that's good. And so let's say let's bring it back down to one period. And we'll bring it back to uh, 12 of those one periods. So there we have it. So now we've got this nice report that we can we can generate and we can you know kind of make our projections. We can provide it to a client and whatnot that project out into the future. And then as time passes, what we want is that variance report. So now that we have this in here, let's go let's go and make another tab, duplicate. And let's go into the accounting and reports again and look at the variance report. Uh, what is this? I went into the 1099 thing or something. It's not where I'm, that's not where I want to be. That's not where I was trying to go, man. Uh, let's go to the ver the budget variance report. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's where we want to be. All right. So up here, then we've got our date range. So let's just take a look at the first two months because we have data, we have actual data in the first two months. So I could go from January 1 to February uh, 28. And then this is our one budget. So that's good and update it. And so there we have it. Now we have our options here, accrual cash, and we could show the accounting basis codes and decimals if we want. We probably don't we probably don't need the decimals. We don't because we didn't put any pennies in there. So I'll just take the decimals off and that can clean it up or make it a little bit smaller and, and easier possibly to see. All right, so this is the standard. So now we actually have numbers. So now we are imagining that time has passed and the actual numbers have come through for January. So uh, so we have the actual numbers and then the budget numbers and the variance, which is, of course, is the difference. So if we pull out the trusty calculator to do some trusty calculations, uh, we can say, obviously, if I took the total down here, we've got the actual 69211 minus the budget 73192. So so the 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 actual is less than the budget. And then we've got the difference, uh, which is the variance, which is going to be that's calculated by taking the, the variance over the budget amount. So divided by the budget, 73192, moving the decimal two places over about 5%. And so, so there we have it. And then we have February, same thing. So we've got, we've got uh, the actual, the budget, the variance and the variance uh, percentage. And then we could, we do have our editing layout. Uh, so we could uh, enable add notes so we can insert content and add notes to it. We could edit the layout and we have that capacity to do our, our editing over here as we choose as well. So we might have a report like this, for example, and we might add a column that would sum up you know, the total. So you still have that flexibility that zero has with with making more flexible reports because of that that great editing tool 
uh, that it has here. So let's go back on over. Now, obviously, if we went out into the future beyond this, we wouldn't have any data left. So if I pull this all the way out uh, to December, for example, we have the budgeted information all the way out through December, but we don't have actual data out past February. Uh, so it's, it's actually not even going to generate it because we don't have any actual data for the actual numbers out past that point. So, uh, so obviously the variance report is useful when we're comparing when time has passed. We've predicted what's going to happen. We put a budget in place and then time has actually passed and we can make that comparison from uh, the budget versus the actual. Now down here, you, you have a similar uh, kind of thing on the expenses, just to, just to look at the expense side of things. These are, uh, you know, here's, here's the budgeted amount for the bank service charge. Uh, this is the actual, this was the budget, and here's gonna be uh, the change and the variance, and they give you these nice little arrows to say if we're over or under. So in this case, we're under budget. And if we look, if we looked at this, we could say this is what actually happened: 35 minus what was budgeted, 216, a difference of uh, 181 under budget. And I can divide that by the budget amount, 216. Moving the decimal two places over, that gives us our 84. If I multiply times 100, it's going to give us about 84 uh, percent. And we can see that all the way down here. And then uh, we have, of course, our totals. And again, we've got the editing of the, of the layout. We can customize these and we could, of course, export these files to the PDF to Excel if we want to further uh, adjust them with Excel. So the overall process of the budget, we generally are gonna say the accounting department isn't normally responsible for the budget alone uh, because they need added information from the management or the owner of the business, but if but they were going to be included in the budgeting process because obviously it looks like an income statement and a balance sheet, and we're experienced in making the income statement and the balance sheet from a technical perspective. The way I would recommend doing that is taking the information from zero, downloading it to Excel, and then working with your team of the owner of the business, management, and the accountant in order to make a budget that we can then put back into the system, zero data inputting it into zero from Excel, possibly with a template and importing it or possibly just data inputting it so that zero can then run these nice reports. One of the best ones being, of course, this budget versus actual report that we could run as time passes to benchmark how we're doing compared to how we planned that we would be doing.